Lately I've been getting a lot of questions about harm OCD and how to do exposure and response prevention or ERP with harm OCD. So first I should clarify for anyone who's not familiar with it, but harm OCD is a name, sort of a colloquial name that's given to OCD symptoms that are related to harm. So that's when people see themselves jumping off of balconies or throwing themselves in front of cars or they see other people getting harmed, uh, they see them getting cut. People, when people avoid carrying knives, uh, when people don't drive because they're afraid they're going to hit someone or because they think they have hit someone. Uh, also, there's a wide range, but basically it's any time that there's a fear of somebody else getting hurt or yourself getting hurt, uh, and usually they go together. This is a, a complex issue, uh, and I'm gonna break this down into three parts. Okay, so number one, if you're struggling with harm-related OCD and you wanna do exposure and response prevention therapy, don't do it on your own. Now there's a really important reason for this and that's because harm OCD typically isn't, uh, or that those types of symptoms that have to do with seeing really graphic images of violence and harm or even feeling it uh, yourself don't typically happen in isolation. Usually those are OCD symptoms that develop much later in OCD and if you're sitting there thinking, oh no, those are the only OCD symptoms I have, then I'd really suggest you go and work with a professional because what's happened is there's all sorts of other things you're doing in your daily life to try and cope with and check on and control anxiety and those are compulsions and you're not recognizing them as compulsions. And, but those are actually what's contributing to your, to your OCD. They're probably things you've been practicing for years and you think are just normal parts of everyday life and they're just part of your personality, but what's happened is they've actually been sort of exacerbating and contributing to your OCD and that's what's gotten you to where you are today. So that's the number one thing I'd like you to keep in mind. If you're tackling harm OCD, don't do ERP on your own. Go and talk to a professional because there's probably other compulsions you should tackle first instead of doing those. The reason you want to tackle those is because they're causing you a lot of anxiety. I mean, it's, it's really terrible to see people getting harmed every day or to feel yourself getting harmed every day. It's absolutely understandable that you want to tackle those, but there's actually other compulsions you should probably tackle first. Which brings me to the second point. So ERP is brain weightlifting. So you don't, just as if you went into the gym and you, you had this really intense workout for the very first time in your life and you were just dripping sweat and you're so sore and the next day you're in incredible amounts of pain and you say, I'm never going back to the gym again, exercise just isn't for me. And that's often what happens when people do ERP on their own with the thing that bothers them the most. When you tackle that incredibly stressful compulsion that you're dealing with, it's gonna cause you an enormous amount of anxiety, particularly when it has to do with harming other people because yeah, you don't wanna harm someone else. So the anxiety is going to be incredibly high and then you're gonna say, oh, ERP is not for me, it doesn't work, I'm not gonna do it, it was too stressful. But the thing is, it does work, you just did it incorrectly. So to go back to point number one, work with someone. So they're kind of like your personal trainer. Doing ERP for harm OCD is like brain weightlifting and it's so intense that you really do need a trainer because they're gonna start you off right. And the, the advantage to starting small is that you actually, you build up the strength to tackle those tougher compulsions and obsessions that you have and you'll actually enjoy doing it and you'll be ready to do it and you'll be ready to handle all the sorts of weird things that will happen. Okay, now before I get to the third point, I wanna talk a bit about the harm OCD symptoms I had and what that looked like for me getting over them because that kind of relates to the third point uh, and the first and second point too. So uh, I had all sorts of so-called harm related uh, OCD symptoms. Uh, if I was walking upstairs, I would see myself falling and smashing my teeth in on the stairs and I would actually feel it. Like, uh, the, there would be a very noticeable sensation of pain throughout my jaw and I would be really stressed out and I would tense up. If I was driving, I would see cars getting hit all the time. Uh, even if I was just a pedestrian uh, walking down the street, I would see cars hitting each other. If I was standing at a traffic light and uh, the traffic light had gone red and there were cars pulling up to the traffic light and people crossing, I would see those cars drive right through the traffic light and run those people over and I would literally like see it. So a lot, it, this is kind of one of the difficult aspects of OCD to explain to people, but to me the experience was very real. So every morning when I was walking to school for instance, I would see people be maimed and killed and spread across the intersection and it was totally real and incredibly alarming. If I was holding a knife uh, and there was nobody else in the room, so a big knife in the kitchen, uh, I would see it I would see it dropping into my foot and I would feel it or I would see myself cutting 
uh, my hand off. Uh, if there was somebody else in the room or a pet or something like that, I would see them getting hurt that I would drop the knife. So I would carry the knife over the counter because I was so convinced, even if they were on the other side of the room, that if I dropped the knife here, somehow it was going to end up inside of their body. So there's all sorts of, I mean, and I could sort of keep going on. And as my OCD got worse, these, especially the, just the visions of seeing people get harmed, uh, seeing people trip and fall on the sidewalk and have their heads smashed open. All these things were, were very real and they would just happen constantly throughout the day. So every day I was just seeing lots of people get harmed and killed and so on. So it was really terrible. Uh, it's not a good thing. But was interesting, I didn't actually know that was a symptom of OCD. So when I went to get help for my OCD, I never explained that as one of my symptoms and one of the things I was worried about. It was only through doing uh, diagnostic tests that my psychologist gave me that I found out that was a symptom. Uh, but that wasn't actually something we tackled during ERP because uh, there was the assumption that it would resolve itself. Because that was something that had happened much later, uh, that just happens much later in OCD, you sort of build up to it, your brain gets used to throwing anxious thoughts at you. And your brain wants to keep you from harm. And so after years of practicing that, after years of thinking up all these different ways that bad things could happen, my brain was so used to it that it would just throw out all these images of bad things that could happen. So getting over that and getting rid of that was really about getting rid of all of the other compulsions that I had been doing for years that didn't seem like such a big deal. And by doing that, I really pushed back on how my brain handled anxiety. And those obsessions essentially took care of themselves, except for the ones that involved overt compulsions, like holding knives uh, over the counter, for example. So there's a clear compulsion. Uh, I would, so I would get a fear that something bad would happen with the knife, and then I would carry it over a counter, or I wouldn't use the knife at all. And so to get over that, I had to learn how to practice what's called acceptance. And that's number three. So practicing acceptance is about recognizing that you are not your thoughts, that there's you, there's your thoughts, and you can choose what to do with your thoughts. So when you have one of these thoughts about something violent happening, you can recognize that as kind of like indigestion or weather just passing over your soul. You don't have to react to it. In fact, you just sort of agree to it. When you do it, acceptance, you practice sort of agreeing with your thoughts and just saying, yeah, that's a thought that could happen. I mean, it's a possibility, anything is possible and then you act according to your values. And by doing that, you show your brain there's nothing to be scared of. And when your brain learns that there's nothing to be scared of, it's not gonna keep reminding of you of those violent things. But the key is that you accept that it could happen, and then you carry on your way and show your brain that it doesn't happen. But it could, but you're not worried about that. So acceptance really helped me, to go back to the example I mentioned of the carrying the knives and avoiding knives. So when it came time to tackle that with ERP, so the approach is then that I, I need to, the ERP approach is that I'm going to hold the knife, I'm gonna use it as I normally would. Now what happens though is of course my brain would throw up a thought like, oh no, that's going to, you're gonna stab it in your arm, you're gonna cut off your whole wrist or something like that and your hand is gonna go flying into the soup. And so when that would happen, I would just accept that that, that could happen. I'm just having that thought that it could happen and then I would continue using the knife uh, as I needed to. Uh, it helped that I took cooking classes, so I had to learn how to use a knife, and I had to use it around all sorts of people, and of course that brings up all an incredible number of intrusive thoughts about all sorts of bad things happening, and I accept those, and I keep acting how I know I want to act. But I did that at the very end of a six-month course of exposure and response prevention therapy. So that brings me back to the first two points. If you're dealing with harm OCD, go and see a professional, you need to work with a professional because they're gonna help you start small, which is the second point. And after you've learned how to start small and build up your brain strength to tackle anxiety, then at the end of that, then you start to deal with a lot of these tougher uh, compulsions that you have related to OCD. And there's a, a vastly higher chance that you'll be successful with them and you'll never have to deal with them again. So absolutely, doing ERP for harm OCD is tough, but you can do it, uh, you just need to do it in the right way uh, and recognize that it is a process. You're engaging in a process of making your life healthier. It's not a magic bullet. It doesn't happen overnight, but the benefits are incredible. And I mean, not having to see people get killed every day is amazing. So I highly recommend doing ERP, but just make sure you do it in a proper way that's not gonna make it too tough for you uh, and that is going to set you up for being successful.